are going to investigate the concept of coordination mechanisms. Given that work is often specialized, this implies that companies need to coordinate and align different activities performed by different people. This is the main purpose of coordination mechanisms at the micro level. We are talking about coordination mechanisms at the micro level because today we are going to investigate the individual perspective. As a matter of fact, you could use coordination mechanisms also at the macro level, referring to coordination among units. There are two main categories of coordination mechanisms, respectively ex post and ex ante mechanisms. Ex post mechanisms refer to solutions implemented when a problem arises and coordination among individuals is necessary to solve it. On the contrary, ex ante mechanisms refer to the concept of standardization and aim at preventing that a coordination problem occurs. Let's start with the ex post mechanisms. The first, as well less structured ex post mechanism is mutual adjustment. In fact, mutual adjustment is the simpler and most immediate type of coordination mechanism, and it relies on a direct and informal agreement between individuals in order to solve a problem. We have a lot of mutual adjustment situations. Think about regular meetings, conference calls, emails, and several others. The most fruitful example to address the informal perspective of this mechanism is the so-called coffee machine effect. For example, Monday morning exchanges at the coffee machine back to the office after the weekend is the perfect example of an informal exchange of information and of restructuring of weekly activities. This mechanism is suitable for simple contexts or in highly turbulent environment. The second ex post mechanism is direct supervision. This is a formal mechanism where a formal head is identified and is responsible of control and coordination of different people placed under her supervision. This mechanism follows the hierarchical and official chain of the organization. When a supervisor has a lot of people under her supervision, this coordination mechanism is integrated by mutual adjustment. Let's move now to the ex ante mechanism. As mentioned before, all the ex ante mechanisms refer to the concept of standardization. The first is process standardization, that pertains to the definition of the process workflow and activities to clarify how the activities are supposed to be done. Typical examples of process standardization are quality manuals, checklists, job descriptions or frequently asked questions. This type of mechanism is suitable for stable environment and stable processes. The second ex ante mechanism is output standardization. In this case, managers are not formalizing what activities the employees need to perform, but just which results they have to obtain. Example of this mechanism is the definition of output features to provide to a customer in terms of quality, punctuality and price through a service level agreement. Another example might be the monthly target in terms of volume as well as marginality provided to the sales force to evaluate their performance. This mechanism is suitable when it is possible to clearly distinguish who plans activities and who executes them, and is not very suitable in turbulent environment because it might not be easy to identify realistic targets to achieve. Finally, the last coordination mechanism is related to competence standardization. In this case, what is defined are the competencies necessary to perform specific activities. Example of this mechanism might be the hiring of a surgeon based on her specific areas of expertise. For example, heart surgery is different from brain surgery. This mechanism is especially suitable in very turbulent environment. Process standardization is not possible and targets might not be reliable. And so managers could simply hire and allocate the best people to solve problems that might occur. But are these mechanisms mutually exclusive and independent? The answer is no, they aren't. Indeed, we talk about coordination mechanism cycle. The five coordination mechanisms are interrelated each other and can be combined together depending on the specific situation of the company or of the single unit. About the company, the coordination mechanism could change based on company evolution. The higher is the complexity, uncertainty and turbulence, the more structured coordination mechanisms are needed. About the unit perspective, the same company could use different mechanisms in different departments. For example, an innovative company could manage the R&D department through competence standardization, 
but using process standardization to coordinate quality management people or production line. Finally, to conclude, it is important to understand that coordination is not without cost. Think about how many hours people spend in a week in meetings or to reply to emails. You should consider this time as a coordination cost. Another example is the salary of supervisor. The more supervisor you have, the more supervisor's salary you need to pay. Thereby, it is important to understand that coordination and specialization are two strongly interrelated choices in trade off each other. The higher is the level of specialization, the lower is the execution cost for each unit, thanks to the advantage of economy of scale and economy of scope. But on the other hand, the higher is the specialization of people, the higher is the need to coordinate those people to obtain a coherent output and consequently the related cost of coordination. A good organizational design needs to find the optimal balance among these two concepts.